only one, Lenny Anders, her third team pep. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Expertise, resources, commitment. At Sullivan Financial, we offer a team approach to financial planning, offering you a broader scope of expertise than you will likely find in any one person. Clients are our main priority, which is why we work to understand your unique circumstances and ultimately create a distinctive plan that provides a roadmap for your financial journey. Located in Mitchell, Indiana, they can be reached at 812-849-2670. That's 812-849-2670. In 2012, the Washington County Community Foundation began working on its next big initiative, Education Matters. The goal of Education Matters is to increase the educational attainment of adults residing in our county. The initial focus has centered on adults with some college and no degree. With the assistance of scholarships and a peer mentoring program, the foundation began helping adults return to college to complete their degree or obtain a certification in 2013. Realizing that strength lies in numbers, Washington County partnered with Clark, Floyd, Harrison, and Scott counties to create Education Matters Southern Indiana. This initiative continues to build. United Producers Inc. 
We are the largest livestock marketing company in the world. We currently have 17 auction markets and 23 direct buying stations across Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, Tennessee, and Illinois. Our goal is to market your livestock to maximize your dollar while implementing animal safety procedures. To find your local market, visit our website at youproducers.com or contact Ryan Bat at 812-620-0769. Again, that is 812-620-0769. Farmer owned, farmer values. Is your ride not as reliable as it used to be? Eddie Gilstraps is the place to go. With 80 years in the auto industry, we know how to get things done. At Eddie Gilstrap Motors, we have an unbeaten level of commitment to buyers, unmatched customer service, a wide array of new and used inventory, and various financing options are just a few of the ways in which we serve our customers. Give us a call at 877-227-9421, that's 877-227-9421, or just visit our website. Links Clothing and Shoes is proud to support West Washington Senator football and wish them a great season. Stop by and see us for all your school fan gear. We offer a wide variety of tees, hoodies, hats, and more. We also offer custom screen printing and embroidery for your team, business, or event. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and have been serving our community for over 15 years. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, and on Saturdays, they're 9 to 3. Stop in or call us at 812-883-4154. That's 812-883-4154. Shop local and save. As your American Family Insurance agent, Michael Long can offer you dependable auto, home, business, and life insurance, as well as other insurance products. He's big enough to serve and small enough to care. His team and their unique backgrounds, trainings, and experiences have prepared them well to help meet your insurance needs. Additionally, as residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you. Together, they are building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. When it comes to your car insurance, you deserve more than a card tucked in your glove box. That's why American Family Car Insurance goes beyond a piece of paper or an app to give you smart, customized coverage and real peace of mind. No matter how your life changes, you can feel comfortable you will have the right auto insurance protection and support every step of the way. Not sure how much or what type of coverage is right for you? Michael Long is the person to talk to. If you're talking, they will hear you oh, no. every single time. Oh, we're getting killed. Yeah, well, Kyle's not here. How come? Kicked off the team. Didn't Tim tell you? Kyle and some other kids got caught drinking beer in the park a couple of nights ago. Really? Yeah. Zero tolerance. He's out for the season. Come on, it's a first offense, right? That we know of. But why should that matter? He knew not to drink. I've made it clear to Matt, that's what we expect from him. What have you said to Tim? Um, nothing really. You know, a lot of kids try it at this age, so... I... Yeah, well, a lot of kids don't try it, too. I'm not saying that Matt's gonna be this perfect kid, but if I don't tell him what we expect and why he shouldn't drink, how's he gonna know? You think kids that age really listen? <laughs> they never admit it, Bill, but they hear more than you think. Talk. They hear you. For more information about talking with kids about underage drinking, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. In 2015, we launched the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. This is phase two of the Happily Ever After project. With the assistance of several local donors and sponsors, along with five years of fundraising by the Washington County Youth Foundation, we finally had enough resources to launch the service. The Dolly Parton Imagination Library is a free service that mails age-appropriate books to all required Washington County children under the age of five. 
Although the faces of the leadership of the Washington County Community Foundation have changed over time, as is always the case with any healthy, thriving organization, the core values and mission remain the same. We continue to work diligently to assist our donors in creating a legacy that is meaningful to them. All of our success is directly related to the generosity of the sons and daughters of Washington County. We will continue to help our donors give back to our community through our foundation and improve the quality of life in our county. United Producers, Inc. We are the largest livestock marketing company in the world. We currently have 17 auction markets and 23 direct buying stations across Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, Tennessee, and Illinois. Our goal is to market your livestock to maximize your dollar while implementing animal safety procedures. To find your local market, visit our website at uproducers.com or contact Ryan Bat at 812-620-0769. Farmer owned, farmer values. At Eddie Gilstrap, our customers are family. Rated in the top 6% nationwide in Ford dealers, we pride ourselves on our no-pressure environment, honesty, and integrity. Come see us today and discover why we're different. Eddie Gilstrap Motors. Lynx Clothing and Shoes carries a wide variety of items from name brand clothing and shoes to sports apparel and sporting goods. We offer custom screen printing and embroidery, free gift wrapping alternations and layaway. Our hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 to 5.30, Friday 9 to 6, and Saturday 9 to 5. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and are a family owned and operated business. Stop by and see us today. 812-883-4154 In every family, small conversations can make a big impact. I grew up on tour with my parents. Kind of different, but we bonded over music and we talked. Honest conversations, like when my dad shared his experiences as an alcoholic. Your honesty gave me a sense of integrity that I wanted in my own life. And I wanted you to know from someone who's been in recovery more than 30 years now, that hard work is what creates success, not alcohol or other drugs, in whatever you do. Talk, they hear you. Michael Long with American Family Insurance offers auto, home, business, farm, and life insurance, which includes motorcycles, boats, ATVs, UTVs, classic and antique autos, renters, manufactured homes, rentals, along with event coverage such as weddings, golf hole-in-ones, conferences, and much, much more. He's licensed in Indiana, Ohio, and Florida. For more information, look him up on Facebook to see insurance tips and to sign up for his agency giveaways. Michael Long, American Family Insurance, all your protection under one roof. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. We're good at Emma and Jake's just baby-proof their two-bedroom bungalow to prepare for baby number one insurance. We're good at Madeline and Chance's just gave in and became minivan people to make room for baby number two insurance. And we're good at Gabby and Nate's just moved to a house with a bigger backyard to welcome fur baby number three insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. At Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, we're not just good at insurance. We're good at Matt's one-car, two-bedroom apartment with a home office slash home gym so insurance. You, yeah. We're good at Nick's SUV and farmhouse with a remodeled kitchen slash art gallery insurance. And we're good at the Wilbur Suburban Home with the two-car garage slash rehearsal space insurance. Have you seen my hockey socks? Have you checked your sock drawer? Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood.
Welcome to T. Kermit Tower Gymnasium in Campbellsburg, Indiana for sectional 61 action tonight. We have two semifinal games for you. I'm Nick Ingram, and I'll bring you the play-by-play -play for game one. And my partner is Adam Mole, who will be doing the analysis tonight. The first semifinal features the Lanesville Eagles, who are coming off of a game one win against Christian Academy. Their opponent on the other bench tonight is the Rock Creek Lady Lions, who will bring their quick offense with them. Before we get going with the pregame, we want to thank Richardson's Heating and Air for being our game sponsor tonight. And as always, the Indiana Fever for sponsoring the entire IHSAA tournament. So my partner will be here in just, just a few minutes, so we will go ahead and get started without him. So for the pregame tonight, Lanesville comes into it with a 23-1 and loss on the year, and the Rock Creek Lady Lions come into it sitting at a 12 and 11 record just a game above 500 so Lanesville clear advantage there in the record department but don't be don't be shocked by this Rock Creek team's uh, 12 and 11 record they're a good team I mean I think that they there's definitely a chance they'll give Lanesville everything that they want tonight they play a little bit different style than Lanesville saw against Christian Academy and I think that this Rock Creek team can really bring a punch to tonight's game that Lanesville hasn't seen so to recap what's happened so far in sectional 61 in game one on Tuesday, Lanesville dominated Christian Academy 56 to 26. Christian Academy fought hard with Addison Jackson and Brooklyn Shields both having eight points. But leading the way for Lanesville was Ava Kerr with 14 and Hadley Crozier with 11. Really the difference in that game was Lanesville's ability to rebound and force the Lady Warriors into bad shots. Lanesville won the rebounding battle 34 to 21 and held Christian Academy to a 25% field goal percentage and a 9.3 point percentage. So, Adam just got here, so I want to welcome you to tonight, give you a minute to catch your uh, spot on the page. But um, I was just saying that, just recapping what happened last night. Yeah, all right, and then for Rock Creek, they're coming off a, a win against South Central, 72 to 51. Before they won, or before the win, they lost back-to-back -back against Providence and against Brownstown in overtime. Yeah, and I was saying that 12 and 11 record is maybe a little lower than it should be for this team. I mean, they they took Brownstown to overtime, and we've seen Brownstown play. They're a real good team. Yeah, bro, Brownstown and Providence are good teams, really good teams, especially to take them to overtime. I think they're definitely better than their record. Yeah, Rock Creek is rated 128 and then number 23 and 1A according to the Sagan rating. So we got a top 25 matchup for you tonight. Yeah, quite a bit of difference from 1 to 23. But like we said, I think that, uh, that uh, record's holding them back a little bit. Yeah, Lanesville, on the other hand, has won nine in a row, dating back to December 29th. Including last season, the Lady Eagles have only lost three games in 54 total tries. That's ridiculous. So Lanesville also used to blowing teams out. They average a 22-point margin of victory, which is 15th in the state regardless of class. Yeah, and you said their defense is 18th regardless of class. Yeah, so clearly they've got some firepower. Um, Lanesville is going to be favored 62-37 to 37 according to John Harrell. Which he's usually pretty accurate. So um, Rock Creek's offense has been very up and down. They've shown the ability to score with four games over 70, but they've also been held under 40 points four times. But overall, they're going to balance it out to a 42.1 average. Yeah, and their defense is their weakness. They give up 52.5 points a game. They were able to hold Lanesville to 50 the first time they played, which was one of the Eagles' worst offensive outputs all year. Yeah, and like we said, if you don't know this Eagles team already, Lanesville's success is going to start with their high-powered offense. It's averaging over 58 a game. But the thing that holds them together is their defense. And then it's ranked 18th in the state, like Adam said, regardless of class. And they're only going to give up 31 points a game. Yeah, Lanesville is also a very disciplined team, averaging only six and a half turnovers a game and turning their opponents uh, over on an average of 14 times a game. Yeah, so you can see the fans really starting to file in here tonight. Lanesville brought a heck of a crowd. Rock Creek's fans just now getting here, it looks like. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a difference from the Rock Creek to Lanesville side here. So when you look into personnel, Rock Creek's a fairly young team. They're only going to start one senior with another senior that comes off the bench. Yeah, which that's not too far from Lanesville's two seniors they start. Yeah, for sure. So their offense is very balanced with all their starters averaging at least five points a game. Their best player, however, is going to be sophomore Khalees Stansby, who is averaging 11.4 points a game, and she also scored over 20 points four times this year. 
Yeah, I mean, scoring 20 once, let alone, is pretty solid. Doing it four times is ridiculous. So, um, fellow sophomore Aliyah Brown also averages 9.4 points a game and then an impressive 7.4 rebounds. Yeah, so we're looking at a team that could be good for a couple of years now. Yeah, for sure. And their top shooter is going to be Ryland Byers, who shoots 52% from the field and 24% from three. Lanesville is loaded with talent and experience, playing four seniors and three juniors on a regular basis. Yeah, like we said, there's a reason this Lanesville team is number one in the state. You don't get that number put next to your name for nothing. I mean, you have to put up every night, produce points, and this is what that Lanesville team does. Uh, junior Hadley Crozier is the do-it-all guard for Lanesville. She averages 15.1 a game on 47% shooting. She also averages 4.7 assists a game. And like we said last time, she's one of the top guards in the class of 2025 in all, in all of Indiana. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Lanesville comes out shooting because last time in this gym, they didn't hit very many shots. They still blew uh, Christian Academy out of the water, but we'd like to see them hit some more shots. Yeah, especially the free throw shooting. It was really off, not only, not just for them, for both teams, but especially for that uh, West Wash or for that uh, Lanesville team. Yeah. So... Ava Kerr is going to be the Eagles' second leading scorer. She averages 10 and a half a game and almost five rebounds and is coming off of a 14-point game in round one against Christian Academy, which led everyone in that game. Yeah, and then Jane Davis is arguably the Eagles' best shooter. She is shooting a 47% rate and an impressive 39% from three. So I hope that kind of sets the scene tonight. Both of these teams fighting for a chance at the sectional 61 title game. you got to think that Lanesville – is thinking even deeper than the sectional. Yeah, like we said, they're coming off a state championship. They're the number one ranked in 1A. They definitely have their eyes set on state. Yeah, and then this Rock Creek team trying to play upset tonight and get this Lanesville team here in the semifinal. And, you know, Rock Creek gets a win tonight, and they're, they have a chance to win the sectional title. Yeah, completely, which there is a lot of good teams in this. There's Rock Creek, Lanesville. So we're going to have to pause for just a moment for the National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the And we are back here. So before we give the starting lineups for both of these teams, we're going to give you our keys to victory. First for Rock Creek, I got wrote down, number one, they have to stop Lanesville's bigs. Yeah, complete, I completely agree with that. Lanesville does have the size advantage, so if they, have, if they struggle in the post, it could get ugly quick. And then number two, I put rebound well. They have to, especially on the offensive side of things, we put the same – the, we put these two as the same thing for Christian Academy, but they apply tonight as well. Yeah, which Christian Academy did well rebounding offensively, but they did need to rebound more overall. So that'll be a good key for uh, Rock Creek tonight. Yeah, and then our last key for them, they have to limit the turnovers. We talked about it already. Lanesville turns teams over at an ex insane rate. They like to press, get up in your face, and Rock Creek can't fall victim to that. Yeah, and then Lanesville's keys are control the pace of the game. When they play at their pace and their level, they're a great team. 
And then number two, we put continue to dominate the turnover battle. I mean, it's kind of the same thing we put for Rock Creek, but on the other side of things. Yeah, like we said, Lanesville turns it over on six and a half, turn the teams over 14. That's a huge margin. And then continue to force their opponents into bad shots. Which that applies just about every game. If your opponents are taking bad shots, you're going to have a chance to win every game. Yeah, it's really hard to find keys keys for this Lanesville team because the truth is if they just do what they've done all year, they, they'll win games. Yeah, I completely agree with you. So if you didn't hear it over the PA, the starting lineup tonight for the Rock Creek Lady Lions, they come into it with a 12-11 and 11 record. They're coached by Sarah Nord in her fourth year at the school. At one guard, they're going to start number 14, a 5'6", junior Ryland Byers. At the other guard, they're going to start number 24, a five foot six sophomore, Kelis Dansby. And then at the forward spot, a number 32, a five foot seven junior, Nevea McWilliams. And at the other junior, Chloe Carter, wearing number 42 tonight, and she's a five foot seven senior. The final starter tonight for this Rock Creek team, a five foot ten senior, number 54, Jaylee Smith. So that kind of sets it up for Rock Creek, for this Lanesville team. Obviously, crowd's already getting into it. They're going to be rowdy all night. At one guard, they start number one, a five foot five senior, Jane Davis. At the other guard, we talked about her already quite a bit. She's a five foot nine junior, wearing number four, Hadley Crozier. At the forward spot, led the team in game one with 14. Number 10, Ava Kerr. She's a five foot five senior. At the other forward spot tonight, number 23, a five foot seven junior, Hilton Brumley. She did not play last game, so it's interesting to see her back. And then lastly, at center tonight for the Eagles, number 42, a five foot nine senior, Ellie Schneider. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Rock, Street, Rock Creek starts not playing a game yet. See if they come out cold or see if they come out hot. Yeah, I mean, this team hasn't played a game in a while, so will they be able to use their energy? that you know they have kind of saved up or um are they going to be cold to start it yeah let's get it started yep so tipping off for rock creek going to be jaylee smith for lanesville it was hadley crozier it's going to be won by jane davis on her own end she flips it over to crozier and the eagles will start things off here in the semi-final setting it up looks to be a one two two or a two three zone here for rock creek yeah, so Lanesville working it around same, pretty much the same defense they saw against Christian Academy, but this Rock Creek team's got a little bit more size, already creating a turnover, going to be taken out of there by Carter. She is going to give it to her teammate Dansby, and they will get things going on the other end. Yeah, Crozier was a little out of control there. Corner three for Nevaeh, Mick Williams falls short. Rebound underneath, stays with Rock Creek. Chloe Carter, offensive rebound and score, and this Lady Lions team with a quick 2-0 lead. Yeah, that's a great board. That's a great putback. So Crozier will bring it up for Lanesville, flips it over to Davis. Still in that 3-2 zone is what I'm going to call it. It's kind of what it looks like to me. Yeah. Another turnover here. Dansby with a steal. She's going to go coast to coast, spins, goes up, and she'll be fouled. What a move. Yeah, that was a great move by there, and she just gets, she just gets straight attacked by the Lanesville there. Which <laughs> that was a great steal there on the other end. Yeah, what do we say before the game? they got to create turnovers. They've done that already. Oh, yeah. Uh, quick start, already two for Lanesville. So Dansby is a 52% free throw shooter. She's got a chance to increase the lead to even more right here. Her first one is up and good. So the three point advantage for Rock Creek. Second and one's up, it's no good. Rebound will be taken out the other way. Kerr with it, moving around to Jane Davis. Yep, so Davis going to give it, flips it into the corner to Brumley. Brumley going to drive to her right, flips it back over to Kerr. Kerr spins in the paint, kicks out Brumley for three. No good. Rebound will stay with Snyder. She flips it underneath to Hadley Crozier. She goes up and she'll be fouled. Yeah, that's a great pass by Snyder there. And then it looks like Lines just got Crozier a little bit on the back of the head there. Yep, so Crozier will go up to shoot two free throws. We talked about it last game. She really struggled for the line, even though she's a 62% free throw shooter. Yeah, it looks like we said the whole team really did. So she knocks down the first one. Yep, no struggle there. She hits her first free throw of the night. 
she's asked to do a lot. So her free throw shooting, if it's a little bit behind, no big deal. Second one goes in as well. Yeah, which looks like she's picked it up from the last game already. And this is the strength of this Lanesville team. When they're able to set up the press, it really puts teams in bad positions. They set it up here. Rock Creek breaks it no problem, hitting Byers on the cut. Byers underhanded shot, no good. And it's going to go be a foul on Rock Creek, I believe. Navea McWilliams is who they're going to call that one on. So interesting call there. I couldn't see it real well underneath. Yeah, it looked like she kind of was in front of her boxing her out, so I don't hate the call really. Yeah, right in front of that big Lanesville student section as well. That can't tell me that doesn't make a difference. Oh, 100%. So Dane, Jane Davis with it, gets it down to Kerr. She's going to flip it out to Brumley, swings it to Crozier. Crozier on the drive, reverse layup off the backboard, no good. Taken out of there for Rock Creek. Carter will bring it up for the Lions. She's looking for somewhere to go with it. Pressure by Crozier, Crozier up top. We're going to get a timeout by Rock Creek. It's a 30-second timeout. So with 5.58 to go in the first quarter, Rock Creek with the early 3-2 lead over Lanesville. We'll send it away. In every family, small conversations can make a big impact. I grew up on tour with my parents. Kind of different, but we bonded over music and we talked. Honest conversations, like when my dad shared his experiences as an alcoholic. Your honesty gave me a sense of integrity that I wanted in my own life. And I wanted you to know from someone who's been in recovery more than 30 years now, that hard work is what creates success, not alcohol or other drugs. In whatever you do, talk, they hear you. So we return here. Rock Creek was in some trouble over there around half court. Coach Nord had to call a timeout, so she didn't lose the possession there. Yeah, which they came out. They started off pretty hot, got two turnovers, got a foul, hit one, and made a bucket on the other. So Dansby brings it across. Crozier with the defense at the W at center court. Shifty dribbling here for Rock Creek to get going. And here's a cut for Dansby. She goes up. Her shot's going to be blocked out of bounds by Schneider, but the ball will stay with Rock Creek. Yeah, Schneider got all of that. Yeah, big time block there for Schneider in the paint. Like we said, Rock Creek with possession. She's going to get it in quickly back to Dansby, looking for somewhere to go with it. She'll just pull it out. So here's the drive. She's going to flip it un underneath to Carter. Carter goes up, and the jump ball was called before the shot. Which the Lions are wanting an and one there, but I don't hate the jump ball. Yeah, I don't hate that call either. Both teams really had possession of it. It'll stay with Rock Creek. So for the third try here, this time the inbound will come to Byers. Byers, runner at the free throw line, and it's good. Jane Davis went down in the paint there. Not sure what that was all about, but nonetheless, the basket's good, and Rock Creek's got a 5-2 to lead. Yeah, that was a great little floater runner there. So Brumley with it, swings it to Kerr in the corner, back up top to Davis. Davis will drive, kick to Brumley, back up top to Schneider. Schneider to Davis in the corner, back to Brumley. Yeah, swings e it, Kerr Eagles for three, move. and it's good. Yeah, Eagles moved the ball great there, got a great three look, knocked it down. That's a great shot by Kerr. So we're all tied at five now, and that's what that Lanesville team can do. Almost creates a turnover there. Here's the drive, a dish to Carter, and there's a steal for the Lanesville Lady Eagles. That's a great steal by Kerr there. It was a great pass, just Kerr made a better play on the ball. So Brumley brings it across. She's around the three-point line, swings to Kerr. Kerr for three in the corner, no good. Rebound pulled down by Dansby, and she will take it up for Rock Creek. So Kerr tried to go back to back and just missed that one. Yeah, Rock Creek pushing the tempo there, not not really trying to give Lanesville a chance to get set up and give them that pressure that Lanesville normally does. Yeah, I can't say I disagree with that decision at all by Coach Nord. So here's the pressure for Lanesville. This is what it can do to you. Whistle blows and a jump ball will go to Lanesville. That's one thing that's not really talked about. And like we said it a bunch last time, Lanesville creates jump balls and eventually those alternating possessions go your way. Yeah, it's huge hustle plays there by Lanesville that ultimately gets them the ball back a lot that they wouldn't get back if they weren't making those hustle plays. So 34 will check in for Rock Creek. 
Or I think I heard that wrong. I think it was 22, but nonetheless, Kerr hits a corner three, and Lanesville takes the eight to five lead. Yep. So Byers with it. She's looking for somewhere to go with it. Dansby coming around to the back side. She's going to get it up the court finally. Drive, kicks it over to Jaylee Smith, who will shoot. Rebounds tipped out of bounds, and it'll be Rock Creek ball. Yeah, it wasn't a bad shot. She just overshot it there. Rock Creek will remain possession. So Dansby looking for somewhere to go with it. She's going to get it right into Smith. Smith will hand it off to Dansby. Right around the three-point line, thought about the three. She's going to try to give the pass to Jones. Stolen by Kerr, but she her momentum took her out of bounds and it'll be Rock Creek ball again. Yeah, which she just stared that one right down and Kerr made a great play on it. Yeah, she read that thing almost like a book there. <laughs> so here's some cutting action for Rock Creek. Doesn't find either of them and Dansby settles the defense offense back up top. Into Smith, looking for somewhere to go with it and she just straight threw it out of bounds, Lanesville ball. Yeah, which she was on her way down there, but I'm not sure why she just threw it to the corner. <laughs> I think she may have been waiting for a Rock Creek player to maybe cut into that corner and save the possession or something. Yeah, that had to be the thought behind it. Anyways, Lanesville brings it across. Crozier with it up top. She'll get it inside to Schneider. Kicks out. Three-point shot for Kerr. Hits nothing. And turnover for Lanesville. So Dansby, using and taking advantage of the fast break, gets it inside and a foul call before any shot attempt. Yeah, which Rock Creek on their defense, they've lost Kerr twice now, which luckily she's missed too. But she knocked down an early one, so I wouldn't be surprised if she hits the next one. Yeah, Hilton Brumley will pick up that foul. She's a 9.3 points per game on the stat sheet. And here's a quick pass inside to Byers. And Byers is surrounded by four Eagles. We'll get a jump ball. Possession stays with Rock Creek. Yeah, that's one of those passes. If she was able to go up with it early, it would have been a good pass. But... If she's not, she kind of gets stranded, like we said, right there in between four eagles, and you can't do anything about it. So Dansby will inbound. She's going to throw it into Brown, Aaliyah Brown. Aaliyah Brown on the drive, tries to get it down low to Smith. She finally finds her, and Smith throws up the layup, hits no backboard, and makes it. Yeah, Smith made a great hustle play to get the ball there and put it up as quick as she could. So Rock Creek cuts the deficit to just one with 2.34 to go here in the first. Crozier with it up top. Pressure comes. Go ahead with what you were saying. Oh, Rock Creek made a better effort to get out on Kerr. That's good. So here's a corner three for Schneider. She can shoot it. No good. Smith pulls down the rebound. Gets it up ahead. Handsy defense from the Eagles. Nothing called. And Chanel Jones will take it the other way. Inside pass to Aaliyah Brown. She goes up. She'll be fouled, and she'll shoot two. Yeah, which that was great handles there by Jones, and she made a great pass to find to find Brown there underneath. So Brown is a 59% free throw shooter. She shoots it at an impressive 70% field goal percentage. Her first free throw is up and it is good. Yeah, that was a great pass, but honestly it was a good foul there by Schneider. Not giving up an easy layup. So her second free throw is good as well. And the Rock Creek Lady Lions lead it by one, nine to eight here. Just about two minutes to go in the first quarter. Rock Creek's fans starting to get into it a little bit. Yeah, it's, as the game has went on, there's been more pile in. And there's a play for Lanesville. They get it inside to Allen. Allen goes through the contact and gets the and one opportunity at the free throw line. Yeah, which Allen didn't have a huge game last, uh, last game, but already on the board. She's came to play. Yeah, she didn't get the start tonight in favor of Hilton Brumley, but off the bench, she's already came in and gave these Eagles two big points to give them the lead again. Yeah. Her free throw is up, and it's good as well. So her third points of the night. And Coach Nord wants a timeout for Rock Creek. We were going to send it away. Your score, Lanesville 11, Rock Creek 9. You're listening to the West Washington live stream in WWSR. United Producers, Inc. We are the largest livestock marketing company in the world. We currently have 17 auction markets and 23 direct buying stations across Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, Tennessee, and Illinois. 
Our goal is to market your livestock to maximize your dollar while implementing animal safety procedures. To find your local market, visit our website at youproducers.com or contact Ryan Bat at 812-620-0769. Again, that is 812-620-0769. Farmer owned, farmer values. So we return here, closer game than I think any of us could have expected. 158 to go in the first quarter. Rock Creek, 9 to 11 deficit to Lanesville, but they have the ball and Dansby breaks the pressure with ease here. Yeah, it's been a great game, really, like you said. Beautiful passing all the way down to Smith. She goes up and scores and we're tied again. That was great movement by the Lions there. Everybody touched the ball, got a nice easy layup there. Yeah, I mean, incredible assist there for Rock Creek as they tie the game here. On the other end, Kerr will try, Ava Kerr will try and settle the offense here. Yeah, I mean, you'd expect that play went exactly as Coach threw it up there. So Davis gets it inside. Pass was tipped. Finally finds Kerr on the three-point line. No good. Good box out, but it was Jane Davis that snuck through and got the rebound for Lanesville there. And here's a drive and an ugly shot for Lanesville. It'll stay with him, though. Third chance here for this time. It is Emma Davis who scores. Yeah, that was a rough shot by Allen there, but she gets the on board and finds uh, Emma Davis, and that's a great shot. So once again, Lanesville back on top. It's a back and forth game so far. They're gonna get it inside to Ryland Byers. She had a beautiful attempt at that one, but she just missed the shot. Yeah, that was a great play there by the... And Crozier will do Crozier's thing, taking it all the way from the rebound to the rim and draws the block. We might be able to see that one again. And so Crozier at the line to shoot Two free throws. Her first one is up and no good. Which Smith there, she made a good play. She got it with her hands, but I think she got her with the body. Leading, yeah. Leading to the call. I would agree with that one as well. So Crozier with a chance at her second one. Misses as well, but Schneider pulls down the rebound, finds Crozier again, and they'll get it back inside to Shelby Allen, who scores again. Allen with five points here early tonight. Pressure break broke by uh, Dansby. She tried to find Smith, but it was stolen out of there by Jane Davis, and Lanesville will run with it the other way. Yeah, that's one of those. It was just... Kerr, the three, no good. Rebound out of bounds off of Lanesville. It'll go to Rock Creek. Yeah, the pass was just late there. Smith was open, but it was just a little late. The defense was able to cave in. Yeah, and Kerr had an opportunity there to really give this Lanesville team a big seven-point lead. Just missed the three. And it was good rebounding there for Rock Creek not to let anyone get it. Yeah, which like we said, Rock Creek's done a good job with that. So Dansby on the drive, went, tried to go through the contact. It's going to be called off of Shelby Allen, but Allen was straight up there. Good defense. Yeah, it really was, but it's going to be off on Allen. Rock Creek's going to set up a play here. So Dansby will inbound it for Rock Creek. They need a score here, so they're going to get it in. Back up top to Jones. Chanel Jones being guarded out there by Crozier. She's going to get it over to Byers. Byers the deep three. Buzzer sounds no good. And at the end of the first quarter, the score, Lanesville 15, Rock Creek 11. We will send it away and be back with the second quarter. Links Clothing and Shoes is proud to support West Washington Senator football and wish them a great season. Stop by and see us for all your school fan gear. We offer a wide variety of tees, hoodies, hats, and more. We also offer custom screen printing and embroidery for your team, business, or event. We are conveniently located on the north side of the Salem Square and have been serving our community for over 15 years. Our hours are Monday through Friday, 9 to 5.30, and on Saturdays, they're 9 to 3. Stop in or call us at 812-883-4154. That's 812-883-4154. Shop local and save. So we return here after a close first quarter. Lanesville with the 15 to 11 lead at the end of one. Yeah, it's been a great game after one here. 
So the buzzer sounds team should be getting out here. Once again, we talked about it last game. We want to talk about our Salem Lions News Network. It's what me and Adam do most of our uh, broadcasting for. We actually go to Salem. So we're uh, grateful for the opportunity to do this tonight. We want to encourage everyone to watch some of those games as well as we do a lot of good things over there. Yeah. It's going to be Lane's little ball here coming out. Yep, so Schneider will throw it in to Brumley, and Brumley will get things started here in the second quarter. Uh, Kerr with it in the corner, back up top to Davis. Brumley with it in the right slot. Hits Crozier on the cut, kicks it out to Schneider. Thought about the shot, nothing there. Back up top to Davis. Brumley settles it. Crozier now short corner. Eagles are moving the ball well. So here's Brumley on the drive, and they're kicking it out again. Good pass and kick here. Here's a drive for Crozier. Shot is up, rolls all the way around, and finally falls in. Yeah, hits some backboard and all the way around the rim there, but it falls. It's just Crozier's fourth point of the night. Kerr with the steal, gets it over to Crozier. She'll fake the three. She'll drive all the way through contact scores and make that her sixth point all of a sudden. Yeah, she started, she's starting off hot now. Yeah, she came down on that leg kind of funky, and she looks to be moving all right right now. Yeah, I saw that. She did seem to be limping right off the bat. So there was an almost foul there. But anyways, Ladesville with it. Gives it to Kerr, corner for Davis. She hits Snyder inside. Snyder will shoot a short corner shot. No good. Rebounded by Aaliyah Brown. That's yeah, a great board there by the Lions. And they kind of pushed the tempo to stay away from that Lanesville press. Three-point shot on the corner for Byers. Off the front of the rim, no good. Davis will take it out, and they needed that one. Yeah, the Lions need to get something going here offensively before it gets out of hand. Yeah, Lanesville can, Lanesville can really put teams away in a hurry. Yeah, that's the thing. If you go step for step with them, you always have a chance. But once you let them get rolling and let, uh, let kind of snowball effect build, Lanesville's a hard team to beat. So Davis tries a three there, no good. Brumley gets the rebound all the way to the rim, and it's good. So Dansby will bring it across now for Rock Creek. She'll drive all the way. Good pass there underneath. The shot attempt was no good by Chloe Carter. Rebound will go the other way. It's Crozier up ahead. Shot fakes. Looks for somewhere to go with it. She'll find Schneider. Yeah, kind of sloppy there for yeah. a second. Crozier, three-point shot in the corner. No good. Rebound right off of a guy's head. <laughs> and it'll be Lanesville ball. Now, that was a great board there by Kerr. Carter looked like she was going up for a, another one, and Curtis took it right from her. Yeah. So Brumley will inbound it for Lanesville. She'll throw it up to the top now for Crozier. Crozier gets it inside. Here's a shot for Shelby Allen, and it's good. Yeah, Allen, Allen had her buried from the get-go there. That's a great look and a great shot there by Allen. Allen with seven points. Byers up ahead will shoot a three. No good. Aaliyah Brown rebound. Actually, it's going to be brought down and out of there by Riley Newton, who will score. Yeah, there's the offensive lines. I've been needed for a minute. Newton just a five-foot junior, but she gets the offensive rebound there. So they're going to get it to Kerr in the corner. She'll get it into Allen. Allen's first shot, no good. Her second shot, however, is good. Yeah, which the Lions are doing much better getting out on shooters, but they're struggling in the post now. Here's the pass ahead to Crozier off the steal. Crozier scores, and suddenly Lanesville extends the lead to 27 to 13 and another steal. Yeah, that Lanesville pressure is just destroying the Lions right now. So Jane Davis got the steal, threw it ahead to Crozier, but the pass is a little long, and it'll be Rock Creek ball. Rock Creek will send in Cullis. Kalise Dansby for Ryland Byers now. Here comes the inbound to Dansby. Lions seem to handle the pressure a little better here. Yeah, Chanel Jones will bring it across this time. We're going to get a foul called on Jane Davis. She reached her hands in there just a little bit and enough to draw the foul. Yeah, she tried to get away with it. And the refs called her on that one. Yep, so Riley Newton will throw it in. This time it'll be Khalees Dansby again. She sat for a little bit, but she's back in when they need her right now. 
Here's the drive, gets it back out to Newton. And Lanesville in that 3-2, 1-2-2, whatever you want to call it, zone. Here's a shot up top for Dansby, no good. Rebound fought for it and pulled out of there by Kerr. And she gets it over to Brunley, who will start the offensive set now for Lanesville. Quick three-point shot for Crozier in the corner, no good. Rebound pulled down by Carter. Chloe Carter, yep. That's and a good board there by the Lions. They made Lanesville take kind of a quick shot for Lanesville, really. Yeah, usually Lanesville is more deliberate than that. They're going to get it inside this time. Three-point shot on the way for Chanel Jones. This one misses off the back of the rim, and Brumley will bring it across for Lanesville. Yeah, which Rock Creek is letting it fly, but they haven't hit very many. Yeah, so inside pass to Crozier. She'll drive, kicks it out, and she finds her way back to her. Three-point shot in the corner, no good. Rebound by Newton, and Lanesville will fall back onto defense. Here's the drive for Dansby, and what a move. Yeah, that's a great shot there. She made a good move initially on Kerr there, or Davis. I'm not, I'm not sure which one it was. And then out. So Angie Hinton will call a quick timeout for her team. It's a 30-second timeout. We're going to keep it here for this one. And with 3.26 to go, Lanesville 12-point lead, but Rock Creek's fighting back a little bit. Yeah, they are. They started out a little slow coming into this second quarter, but they started to pick it up. Dansby just came off a great move there like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, and if Rock Creek can get some threes to fall, they're back right back in the game. They have no threes. And, I mean, really, Lanesville, only person to hit a three tonight for them has been Ava Kerr with two. Yeah, so, I mean, if they can stay out on Kerr and do a little better on Allen recently, the Lions will be right back in this game in no time. For sure. And, I mean, they, uh, they're they going to have to go on the defensive end here. So, we will see what they come out in. They've been running that zone. It's worked pretty well. Yeah, it has. Which, now that Smith's back in, I think it will work even better with Allen and on Smith. Yeah, they'll come out with a little bit of a smaller uh, defensive setup here with Newton and the top of it, Byers. Yeah, trying to get in the passing lanes to get a steal here. So Brumley with it up top. She'll find Ava Kerr in the corner. Gets it inside to Schneider all the way to Allen in the post. And she'll take two tries out. And her second one, she will be called for a foul. Or a foul will be called on her. It's going to be number 32, Nevaeh McWilliams, who draws. Yeah. That's going to be her third. So Shelby Allen's first free throw up, and it's good. And she's already got 10 points tonight after not getting the start. Yeah, like we said, she came in and she's been playing great. So Allen will get another attempt at it after hitting her first. Increases the lead to 13. This one up and off the back of the iron, no good. Rebound. Fought for. Crozier uses her forearm to push the defensive away. Comes away with it, but this time... Not so well. They she finally just, do she get just it. Took it away from her. Yeah, I looked down at my page for a second, looked up, and then I saw Lanzo with the ball again. So here's a deep shot for Schneider. It's just a two-pointer, no good. And what a steal for Crozier underneath draws the contact, and she'll get two. And what a hustle play for yeah, her. Yeah, that's a great hustle play there. Newton was kind of falling out of bounds, and she just threw it in, and right to Crozier. Crozier with eight points already, and she's earned every single one of them. Her first free throw up, and it's good. Yeah, her steals and hustle plays are second to none. She's a pretty good shooter. I mean, 47% field goal, 33% from three, and then the only number that I'd say she definitely could get up is that free throw number, which is a 62%. Yeah, which tonight I'm pretty sure she's three for three right now. Yeah, so Rock Creek will substitute Chanel Jones in for Nevaeh McWilliams. In the meantime, Crozier's second free throw is up, and it's good as well. So she has 10 points. Yeah, she's four for four, like we were speaking about the free throw percentage earlier. So here's the pass inside to Smith. She misses, and the rebound will be brought out of there by Kerr for Lanesville. Up ahead to Crozier. Crozier on the right wing, nothing there. Gets it over, swings it to Brumley. Brumley back up top. And Lanesville trying to get it inside. They, they use that inside-out game really well. Yeah, they, they play that perfectly, really, and Allen's had a great night off of it so far. 
Yeah, so they're going to get it inside. Kick out three-point shot. This time it's Emma Davis. No good. Rebound will stay with Shelby Allen. Reverse layup, and this one's good. Yeah, right as we said it, Allen gets another bucket. So Dansby will bring it across. She needs to get her team back into it. Here's the pass underneath to Smith, and she threw it right to Crozier. This has to be steal five or six for Hadley Crozier. Yeah, she's played amazing on the defensive end tonight. Swings it. Corner three for Kerr. No good. Rebound will be pulled out of there by Chanel Jones. The double comes and, oh, almost another steal, but we're going to get a foul on Hadley Crozier instead. Yeah, which once again, that was another, another great hustle play, and that's only her first, first foul of the night. So Jane Davis will come into the game for Ava Kerr for Lanesville. Khalees Dansby with it up top. She gets it over to Byers. Byers, quick trigger three, and it's good. Yeah, which like we said, Rock, Rock Creek has shot a ton of threes tonight. They're finally getting some to fall. So Rock Creek once again fights back to a 14-point game. Here's a corner three on the other end for Davis. No good. Rebound fought for, and Jane Davis was the one to shoot that one, by the way. It's going to be a foul on Hilton Brumley for Lanesville. Yeah, which she was just a little late getting in there on that rebound. Kind of got, kind of wrapped around her there. So, yeah, like you said, it'll be Rock Creek ball, 14-point game. Chanel Jones gets it into Dansby. And it was at 17, so 14 sounds pretty nice for them. Yeah, they're... Their offense is picking up, and the, if they keep it up, they'll be in the game in no time. Smith trying to find somewhere to go with it. Almost a steal. Finally finds the hands of Dansby underneath. Smith will go up, and the ref, I, that was a real confusing sequence. He blew his whistle just a little bit. You could barely hear it, and then he just kind of dropped the whistle out of his mouth and held his hand up. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I think he... Prematurely blew a little whistle there. Yeah, so the foul is going to be called. It was a foul on Shelby Allen, and Jaylee Smith will go to the line to shoot two. Her first one is up and good. So the five foot ten senior, a 39% free throw shooter, doesn't matter on that one as she knocks it in. Yeah, Allen got her a little bit on the hand there. So here's Smith's second attempt at it. This one's up and good as well. So six points tonight for. Jaylee Smith, her high is nine, so she's quickly approaching that number. Yeah, like we said, they cut it down to 12 now. Lions offense is keeping them in the game here. So Davis with it over to Kerr. They got 35 seconds on the clock. They can hold. Yeah, it looks like that's what they're going to do. So, yeah, they got two guards high, and they're just kind of passing it around. Still in that 3-2 zone for Rock Creek. It's almost like a 2-1-2 is what it looks like from here. Yeah. Which is hot with as high as they play their guard. It kind of is. This so they'll find Crozier. 12 seconds on the clock. They get it over to Kerr. Kerr will run the final play here with eight. She's moving to her right. Tries to get it into the corner to Crozier. The pass is going to be tipped by Rylan Byers. It'll stay with Lanesville, but they've only got four and a half seconds to score. Yeah, which that's good defense there by uh, Byers. So Davis gets it into Kerr. Kerr on the drive, Ava Kerr shoots it, and no good, gets her own rebound, throws one up at the buzzer. Foul is going to be called before halftime. Yeah, they're going to call it on Dansby. Yep, so Khalees Dansby is the one to get the foul called on her this time. Two shots with zeros on the clock coming for Ava Kerr. She can only increase the Eagles' lead headed into halftime. Her first one is up. No good. So she's got a chance to give him a 13-point halftime lead if she can make this one. Nope, front of the rim, no good as well. So we will head to halftime. The score, Lanesville 32, Rock Creek 20. We'll be back with the halftime show in just a little bit. At Richardson's Heating and Air, our promise is always to put our customers first and give you the quality and comfort of heating 
and air conditioning that you deserve. We specialize in Ream products that bring comfort and quality together. We've had the privilege of servicing Washington County and the surrounding area since 1996. At Richardson's Heating and Air, you're more than just a customer. You are family. You can visit our web pa- website or our Facebook page to learn more about us. We can also be reached at 812-883-2025. Richardson Heating and Air. It's time for the Commissioner's Corner, an exclusive weekly conversation about Indiana high school sports with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. Now for an up-to-the-minute report about what's happening in the constantly changing world of high school sports, here's Coach Bob Lovell with Commissioner Paul Neidig. Welcome back, everyone, to our weekly conversation with the Commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Neidig. And, Paul, thank you so much for taking time to be with us. We are in tournament time we're in tournament mode girl sectionals this week uh we had uh, uh, wrestling last saturday girl swimming coming up this weekend it is a tremendous time of year for our student athletes around the state you know we we've walked this walk a few times but you know every year this this new tournament season brings a, a new level of excitement you know it's you, you know you have your regular season and that's been done and the girls certainly just finished up their regular season and and uh, now they get to see if all the practice has paid off, and, and they're going to march through this tournament and, and hopefully achieve some of their goals. And we also know teams will not. But at the end of the day, participation in an education-based athletic system is much more than tournament success, and that's one thing we'll always be proud of. But, uh, you know, the other thing, Coach, with uh, girls' basketball, uh, we have a phenomenal partner in the Fever. And actually, some of the Fever players are out around the state attending girls' sectionals tonight. We so appreciate their sports and, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Their, their support and being able to uh, also promote what the Fever does. And I think they're going to have a special year this year. I agree 100%. You and I have the luxury of time behind us. We've lived these experiences as as student athletes, as being members of the athletic community. And uh, always tell parents and always tell kids, enjoy this, because this is a lifelong memory for you, and, and do it and do it the right way. It matters. It matters for all kids. And we're so proud of being able to keep an education-based athletic system that's focused on the classroom first and also focused on the last kid who makes a team. That's, we have to make sure what we do is good for that kid, not all kids. I mean, and, and, the, and in a turn, that makes right. it good for all kids. Paul Knightig joining us. We're talking about the IHSAA. All right, Paul, reclassification is a topic that's out there coming up very soon. You're going to be releasing uh, the Department of Education enrollment figures around the state to begin this process. And just as a reminder for everyone, reclassification is every two years, correct? That's right, Coach, every two years. And as I often have said, uh, you know, there will be a lot of – this is one of the things that we do that often – um, brings a lot of debate to the table, you know, but that's okay because it matters to people, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. The, the the thing that I often say is that everybody out there that cares about what we do can draw a perfect tournament for their school, and certainly we'll hear about that also along the way. And, and I understand that too. But yeah, we're ready to get ready to begin. The, the actual numbers will be released in the coming days. Once those numbers are out, then we'll start putting. Uh, we've already begun putting committees together. And one big change this year, Coach, is that uh, mm-hmm. we used to divide classes even because of the disparity between the size of the schools that we have in the state. Uh, the largest 20, 20% of the schools in the state will be in 4A, and we'll have 25% in 3A, 25% of the schools in 2A, and 30% in 1A. And that's simply because not all of our 1A schools participate in all sports. Uh, right is why we put a few more schools in single class and the the other change this year is we have a, a, a we're going to be aligning sectionals across all four class sports to where your basketball girls and boys your volleyball baseball mm-hmm. softball sectionals will have uh, the same opponents maybe a slight adjustment with success factor but you're going to be those schools are going to be playing each other in all four class tournaments and then we have another committee that does a three class tournament 
And then obviously the six class football tournament is our third committee right. that starts putting these sectionals together. The commissioner of the IHSAA, Paul Knighting, with us talking about all things IHSAA related. Commissioner, be safe, you and your staff, when you're traveling, watching games. Thanks so much for your time and thanks for all that you and your staff do to make sports, high school sports in our state matter at the level that it does. Thanks so much. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate everything you do uh, in this great state. Thanks for listening to The Commissioner's Corner with IHSAA Commissioner Paul Neidig and Coach Bob Lovell. And thank you for your continued support of the high schools in your community. And so we are here for your halftime show. The score, Lanesville 32, Rock Creek 20. Before we say anything, we want to thank our game sponsor again, Richardson Heating and Air, and then um, the Indiana Fever for the, being the tournament sponsor tonight. Um, you know, thank you to them for allowing us to do this. So we'll go ahead and give you the stats here. We've got two and a half minutes till the game resumes for Rock Creek. In the first half, the scoring was done by Ryland Byers, who had five points. Um, Aliyah Brown with two, Khalif Dansby with three, uh, uh, Riley Newton with two, and then Chloe Carter with two, and then lastly, the leading scorer in the first half for Rock Creek was Jaylee Smith, who added six points. For your total of 20. And then for your Lanesville, uh, Crozier had 10, Kerr had six, Emma Davis had two, uh, Brumley had two, and then Shelby Allen led the way with 12. So the question is, what do you think that this team has to do to get back in it for if you're um, Rock Creek right now? Yeah, if you're Rock Creek, you got to have some, you got to play great defense and you got to get your offense going. Yeah, they, I mean, they were held to, sorry to cut you off, but they were held to 20 points in that half. So clearly the offense wasn't flowing as well as uh, Coach Nord could have hoped. Yeah, which it was super streaky. They'd come out, they'd look great, they'd score like six straight, and then they wouldn't score for a long time. So if they can be super consistent on offense and keep playing defense really the way they have, and if Smith can stay out of foul trouble, I think her and Allen will go back and forth all night. Yeah, and one thing that we didn't mention before the game started, we got a heck of a uh, coaching battle tonight when you look at these two coaches. You got on one side, Lanesville, Angie Hinton, her in her six seasons at Lanesville, she has a imp very impressive 136 and 20 record. And then overall, she's 317 and 95. Yeah, I mean, she's a great coach. Like we said, she's, she's won two state championships, looking for a third, really. Yeah, and then on the other end of things, for Rock Creek, it, Sarah Nord, she's just in her fourth year at the school, but she's got the background of it, just, you know, that compares with any coach in the state of Indiana. I mean, she went, played at Louisville, played college basketball at U of L, and actually, I forget what the stat was exactly, but she either led or she's like top, one of the top three in assists in school history at U of L. Yeah, which that's ridiculous. You can't teach experience, really. She's got plenty of basketball experience. Yeah, she's, you know, giving that to her team. And the thing with Rock Creek is they're just a young team. They got two sophomores, a couple juniors, and then. Uh, a senior, or they started two seniors tonight, actually, but they'll be back here, and every year they've got the chance to be better and better. Yeah, especially like we talked about with that uh, great uh, leadership and experience at uh, head coach. 
So we're, we're going to return to play here as the clock finds its way to zero. Lanesville holds the 12 point lead going into the second half. Rock Creek will start it. The teams will flip ends and Khalees Stansby will bring it across for Rock Creek. Yeah, let's see if Rock Creek can get their offense going early here. So Dansby will drive on Brumley, nothing going there. They're running some sort of like 1-2-2 two, two again. So they'll get it inside to Byers. She'll pull it out. Yeah, Lions being very patient here on offense. Yeah, and even though they're down, you have to be patient. I feel like in the first half they rushed quite a bit. Yeah, they did. There was times where they just pull a quick three when they could have got a much better shot. So almost a turnover, it does stay with Rock Creek. Carter goes up, gets her shot blocked, finds her way back into her hand, and it's gonna be a foul on 42. It's, that's gonna be Ellie Schneider. Yeah, with Schneider, she's had a rough game this game. That's, that's only her second tonight, but she hasn't seen the minutes she's used to seeing, I think. Yeah, she hasn't scored tonight, and in that game against uh, Christian Academy earlier in the week, she had quite a few points. Yeah. So they're looking for somewhere to go with it. Here's a steal for Hadley Crozier. And they, it's nothing that they're not used to doing. They had 18 steals against Christian Academy, and they're looking at it right around 10 tonight, if I had to guess. Yeah, with Crozier having most of them. Yeah, so Crozier, there, here's the inside pass to Snyder. And she just misses that bunny. It'll go the other way. Dansby will lead the charge here for Rock Creek. Yeah, Rock Creek being very patient, getting a good look here. Byers into the pain off the backboard. A beautiful, beautiful touch right there, and that one goes in. Yeah, it's a great shot there by Byers. So Byers picks up her seventh point, and we are back within 10 for Rock Creek here. Here's the pass to Crozier. Three on two opportunity over to Davis. Kicks it out to Brumley. Schneider, deep two, and it's no good. Rebound pulled down by Khalees Dansby. I've said that so many times tonight. She's got to be around eight or nine rebounds. Yeah, the Lions are rebounding very well. And here's a travel on Ryland Byers. And that's one thing when you're trying to get back into a game, the unforced turnovers you cannot have. Yeah, I mean, that, that one's just completely unnecessary there. Just keep your dribble alive and keep moving the ball around. I agree with you 100%. So here's Brumley. She will get it over to Crozier on the drive, dishes it, and shot was no good by Allen. Crozier with it again, and she will hit on her second try. Yeah, a great board by Allen there and finds Crozier. So 12-point game again. Dansby brings it across. Driving to her right, steps back through the contact, goes up, somehow shot it, and then missed it. Rebound finally found the hands of Jaylee Smith, who scored. What, yeah, I mean, a, what a sequence there. Yeah, there was a ton of contact there, but no call. But ultimately, the Lions ended up getting their points there. Kerr, transition three opportunity. No good. Rebound fought for Aaliyah Brown and Hadley Crozier will tie up. And possession will stay with Lanesville. And yeah. this Lanesville team looks more tired than they did it really at any point against Christian Academy. Yeah, which Rock Creek will push the tempo a little bit and play a little harder defense, in my opinion, than... Christian Academy did, but yeah, I mean, they do. They look gassed, and which they've made a ton of hustle plays tonight. So here's Brumley on the drive, swings it over, shot for Allen, up and good. So Shelby Allen picks up where she left off, her 14th point of the game and her first of the second half. Yeah, I mean, she's had a great game. Here's the drive for Dansby, gets it downloaded to Brown. Brown finds Smith, and Smith will pick up her 10th point. Yeah, which the ball movement between Brown and Smith is amazing. Yeah, they have some really good chemistry. Yeah, they seem to always know where each other's at. Crozier step in from the three-point line. She will fire and hit for her 14th. Crozier just showing that ability to shoot it. We talked about it. She shoots it at 47%, and she's got 14 tonight, which is right around her 15.1 average. So here's Byers on the drive. She will pick up the foul. It's going to be on number 10. Curry that is Ava Kerr, yep. Yeah. yeah, which, I mean, she just completely blew right past her and then Kerr fouls it. So Ryland Byers trying to pick up her eighth point of the game. She's just a 47% free throw shooter. Her first one is up, and it's good. Kind of shoots that one from her hip. Yeah. <laughs> Which both teams are shooting pretty well from the free throw line. 
Yeah, for sure. It's been a lot different than it was on night one in general, not just game one. Yeah, the nerves definitely got to the teams. So Byers, second free throw up, and that one is good as well. So they're hanging around, 10-point game, 38-28. Lanesville leads it, 4.45 to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, which if the Lions could step up their defense just a little bit more, just like that. Yeah, just like that. So Aaliyah Brown leads the charge over to Dansby. Dansby right-handed layup, no good. Brown rebounds underneath, gets it stripped from her for Allen, and Crozier will take it the other way. Yeah, which that's a great steal. You got to finish that layup there. Here's the pass down low to Shelby Allen, and she finds the bottom of the net for her 16th. Seven uh, field goals for Shelby Allen. That actually is a season high for her. Coming into it, she had 14. Tonight, she's got 16. Yeah, which that's a great shot there by Byers. Yeah, Byers on the other end with an answer. And she herself has 11 points. So offense coming alive here. Yeah, I mean, it's an offensive battle tonight, really. Yeah, Lanesville held Christian Academy to just 26 a couple of nights ago, and Rock Creek already ahead of that number with 30. Yeah, and really, I mean, neither team's playing great defense, but they're keeping themselves in the game here for Rock Creek. Is. Yeah, Crozier with a beautiful drive there, dumped it down to Kerr. Kerr went up and hit for her eighth point. So 12 point. Lead again for Lanesville. Yeah, the ball movement for both teams has been great. So here's the drive for Dansby all the way to the rim and somehow got that one to fall. Yeah, there was a little bit of contact there, but she powers through it and makes a great play. Yeah, we've said that a few times tonight. She's hardly sat. She sat a little bit during the second quarter. Other end, three-point shot for Kerr, no good. Crozier went for the rebound, but it's going to be out of bounds going to Rock Creek. Yeah, it looked like Crozier just missed it on the grab, and then it bounced off her knees and went right out of bounds. So, Kelly's Dansby will take a seat now, sending in Chanel Jones and Nevaeh McWilliams, and the other one will be Chloe Carter who will sit. Yeah, Lanesville putting on that pressure again. So, different guards. They get through the pressure, no problem. Byers pull up jumper, no good. Rebounded by Allen. And they'll go the other way once again. Crozier in the corner, thought about the three, puts it on the floor, drives, kicks it out to Brumley. Brumley will drive and kick it again, and Crozier will settle the offense. Yeah, Lions got to play great defense here. They need to stop. Need to stop in a bucket here for the Lions. Kerr with it in the corner, gets it up top. Brumley for three, no good. And rebound pulled down by Aaliyah Brown. She's got some room to run, gets it ahead over to... Jones and then three point shot will come from McWilliams. No good. Smith with the rebound underneath, and we're going to get the shot waved off, I believe. Yeah, they're going to call Shelby there, uh, Shelby Allen there on over the back. So that's an interesting call for sure. Yeah, especially for Smith there because she fought through it and got the board and put it right back up, made a great play, but they're going to call it on the floor. So Shelby Allen's second shot. There's three fouls on Lanesville this quarter. Inbound is going to be stolen for Davis, and what a turn of events right here. So Emma Davis' this time brings it across. Good pass from Crozier to Kerr, and she scores. Yeah, that's just a costly turnover there. Didn't quite put enough on the pass, and it leads to two points for the, Lanes for the Eagles. Yeah, so they're going to get it ahead, and we're going to get a foul on Emma Davis, I believe. Not, yeah, like that is huge, because if... If the basket's good, it's an eight-point game, potentially seven with an and-one potential, and then instead they get the uh, foul on the floor, so it'll go the other way. And then they turn it right over, giving Lanesville two, which makes it a 12-point game. Yeah, I mean, that's huge. Yeah, I mean, we're looking, if she hits the free throw on the and-one, we're looking at a five-point difference. So Chanel Jones with it, gets it over to Mick Williams. And they're going to get her for a travel. She changed pivot foots over there. And 12-point game. Lanesville fans can kind of sense it. If they get a score here, they can, I'm not going to say put Rock Creek away, but they can really make things difficult. Yeah, I mean, if they're up 14 this late in the game, it's going to be difficult to come back. It's definitely not impossible, but it'll be difficult. So here's Brumley on the drive. She'll dish it over to Crozier. Back to Brumley, corner for Davis. Thought about the three. She'll drive it all the way into the paint. Shots up high off the glass, no good. 
And rebound tipped around, and it's going to be off of Aliyah Brown, Lanesville ball. Yeah, which there's a lot of battle in there for the board, but ultimately it's going to be Lanesville's ball. Emma Davis is going to pass it in for Lanesville. So Davis throws it into Kerr. Kerr on the drive, kicks it out. Three-point shot for Emma Davis, and no good. Rebound tipped all around. It'll stay with Allen. She'll shoot. Back of the rim rattles around and in. Yeah, great hustle play there by Crocher to get the board and kick it out to Allen. Yeah, so here's some pressure on the other end. And it'll be a timeout for Rock Creek. So the score with 106 to go in the third quarter. Lanesville lead 46-32. You're listening to West Washington live stream and WWSR. We will take a break. As your American Family Insurance agent, Michael Long can offer you dependable auto, home, business, and life insurance, as well as other insurance products. He's big enough to serve and small enough to care. His team and their unique backgrounds, trainings, and experiences have prepared them well to help meet your insurance needs. Additionally, as residents of your community, they understand how important it is to be there for you. Together, they are building strong partnerships that help everyone succeed. When it comes to your car insurance, you deserve more than a card tucked in your glove box. That's why American Family Car Insurance goes beyond a piece of paper or an app to give you smart, customized coverage and real peace of mind. No matter how your life changes, you can feel comfortable you will have the right auto insurance protection and support every step of the way. Not sure how much or what type of coverage is right for you? Michael Long is the person to talk to. And so we are live, a minute and six seconds to go in the third quarter. Lanesville leads it 46 to 32. Rock Creek called the timeout, almost cost themselves a turnover there, but Coach Nord went ahead and took the extra possession. Yeah, which like we're talking about, the Lions need to get their offense going if they want to be in this game. So it'll come into Chanel Jones. She'll get ahead to Mick Williams into the paint. Here's the kick out, three point shot for Jones. No good, rebound. Stays with Rock Creek. Newton just threw it away. Oh. And a baseball pass to save it somehow. Finds Brown. Yeah, and I think that the foul is going to be on Rock on Lanesville. Yeah, it's going to be on 32 Allen. And one thing that I haven't mentioned yet, this Lanesville team out-rebounded Christian Academy 34-21. to And that's not been the story tonight. I would say that Rock Creek... If, is really, really close, if not right there with them. Yeah, I mean, it's been a great rebounding show for the Lions and really for the Eagles as well. It's definitely tight. So Rock Creek in the bonus. Brown's first free throw was up and no good. She averages 9.4, and she's only got two tonight with a chance to make it three with this one. This is a big one if she can knock this in. Yeah. So Aaliyah Brown, her free throw, no good as well. But the rebound to Smith, who misses. Dansby misses. And finally, it's pulled out of there by Lanesville. Yeah, so, which, it was great hustle plays there by all, both teams. The Lions were rebounding well. They just couldn't put it through the hoop. Yeah, so eventually Crozier came away with it, and she was leading the break. And then a Rock Creek uh, girl, I believe it was Riley Newton, ran right to the back of her. Forcing the foul call there. Yeah, which Eagles look to be holding for the last. So Brumley with it up top. She will hold. Chanel Jones putting a little bit of pressure on the ball. Crozier with it now. Yeah, they're definitely just going to set up for last here. Yeah, so 16 seconds on the clock. Usually they usually teams will run their sets right around what? 10, 12, 8, anywhere from that range. Yeah, anywhere between those numbers. So here's the drive. She swings at Emma Davis for three. No good. Rebound pulled down by Rock Creek. So don't think they're gonna get a shot up here. No, they won't. Buzzer sounds. So at the end of three, your score, Lanesville 46, Rock Creek 32. We'll send it away. At Richardson's Heating and Air, our promise is always to put our customers first and give you the quality and comfort oh of heating and air conditioning that you deserve. We specialize in Ream products, 
that bring comfort and quality together. We've had the privilege of servicing Washington County and the surrounding area since 1996. At Richardson's Heating and Air, you're more than just a customer. You are family. You can visit our web pa- website or our Facebook page to learn more about us. We can also be reached at 812-883-2025. Richardson Heating and Air. Well, we are back here, just getting ready to start the fourth quarter. Once again, one final time, I want to thank Richardson's Heating and Air for being our game sponsor tonight. And Rock Creek, after keeping it close in the third quarter, 12 to 14 was the final in points there, but just not able to gain any ground, really. Yeah, which I mean, they have a tall, the Lions have a tall task coming into this fourth quarter. They got to make up 14 points to send it into OT. So, I mean, defense has got to be there, and the Lions got to get it going offensively. Yeah, and this Lanesville team, if we haven't said it enough, they're just really, really gritty and good. Yeah, I mean, they're hustling all over the place. I mean, really, both teams have hustled well. Yeah, I mean, credit to Rock Creek. They made up, uh, They, you know, they're a little undersized tonight. There's no secret about that, but they made up with just their overall hustle. Yeah. It's been good. Completely agree. So they will try and set up something here. They're going to get it over to Newton. Thought about the three, doesn't take it back up top to Jones. Jones will drive, misses her first attempt, but scores on her second. Yeah, gets her own board and puts it right back up. So they are making some ground now. 12-point game. They need to get some stops, though, is what it comes down to. Yeah, I think if you put it within 10, the Lanesville team starts sweating. They're not used to having a close game by any means. For sure. So Davis with it. She'll get it to Crozier in the corner. Back up top to Davis, over to Brumley. Davis again inside to Schneider. Good pass over there to Crozier. Crozier, no good on the layup. Gets her own board, no good on the second one either. And rebound was pulled down by Aaliyah Brown and will get a foul. Yeah, which Brown's got a ton of boards tonight. She rebounds hard. I mean, there's been a couple times the Lions will rebound and the Lanesville Eagles will just come in and take it right from them. So Hilton Brumley picked up the foul. Substitution was, I believe, Ava Kerr for um, Emma Davis there. Yeah. So like you said, the number's 10 if they can get it to there. But this isn't going to help. Up ahead, here's a pass to a cutting Kerr. Kerr goes up and scores. Yeah, the Lanesville's pressure starting to get to him again. So Kerr's 12th point of the game gives... Then the 14-point lead up ahead. Three-point shot in the corner for Newton. No good. Crozier rebounds. And with six and a half minutes to go, they got a chance to really seal it on this end in the next few possessions. Yeah. Like we said, that's 14 is a tall task, and the time's only running out. Yeah, Lanesville patient with the ball now. Jane Davis with it up top. She'll get it inside. Kicks it out to Brumley. Brumley in to Schneider. Hits Davis again, and or excuse me, that's Crozier. Crozier will be fouled and will shoot two. Yeah, Crozier with a great move there on Newton. So the foul is going to be against Riley Newton. That's her second foul. Crozier has hit four free throws tonight. Her first one on this attempt is no good. She's got 14 points, and she's one away from her average. Yeah, she's played a great game so far. Yeah, so she's got a chance to get it right here. So Crozier's routine at the line. And this one is good. So like we said, 15 for her tonight. And the crazy thing is she does that on an average basis. Yeah. Which so the other end, kick out, three-point shot for McWilliams, for, and it's good. Yeah, it's great ball movement there by the Lions. Mick Williams' first three of the game, and now it's a 12-point game. So it's really going to come down to defense for this Rock Creek team. They've shown they can score. They just got to get some stops. So wing-to-wing pass there, and Crozier knocks down another shot. Hadley Crozier is just really fun to watch. Yeah, which the Lions, if they want any chance of being in this game, they're going to have to step up on Crozier. So there's a steal for Crozier all the way. Misses the wide open layup. Jane Davis there to follow. Misses as well. Schneider will shoot the deepest one of the three attempts and hits that one. 
Yeah. Which that's rare to see Crozier miss a layup, which it was a great steal by her there. Yeah, not really sure how all that happened, but nonetheless, on the other end, three-point shot. That's a deep one for Kalise. Actually, that's going to be Ryland Byers, and it's good. So, Coach Hinton has seen enough. She'll call a timeout. It's going to be a full one. And with 5.04 to go, Rock Creek trails by 13, 53 to 40. We will send it away. So we return here, 5.04 on the clock. Rock Creek trails it by 13. And, you know, let's talk a little bit about the second game tonight, Borden and West Washington. Assuming that Lanesville holds on to this, the winner has Lanesville tomorrow, and that could be a good one, the second one tonight. Yeah, I think either way it's going to be a great game, which Borden is ranked two. So, which if we see one and two, that's going to be a packed in for that one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you look at tonight, Lanesville already packed their stands in Rock Creek. Credit to them. They got a drive, and they still brought a few. Yeah. Which they played a solid game, really. So here's the drive from Kerr. 13-point lead. They don't need to be in any hurry. Schneider tries to get it down low to Crozier, and that's what I was saying. That pass really isn't needed there. Yeah, it's one of those. I mean, you can take some more time off the clock and not risk a turnover. So... Inbound will, Schneider will get it into Brumley. Up top to Kerr, Kerr on the drive, runner no good. Rebound, fought for and pulled out of there by Dansby. And Rock Creek has a chance here if they can get a three point shot. They're, they're within 10. So. Yeah, which we said it earlier, that's the number they need to be. Yeah, and they need to get to 10 before the four minute mark is what I'm gonna predict. Or at least 11. So here's the drive from Byers. She dishes over to Chloe Carter, and we're going to get a foul on the floor. This one's going to go against Shelby Allen. Yeah, but that's going to be her fourth. Yeah, that could be a big loss for Lanesville. She's got 16 points, actually 18. Yeah, and her presence in the post is second to none, and then a great steal by Crozier. Yeah, Crozier right just there. read that pass like a page in a book and took it away. So up ahead, Kerr for three. No good. Rebound stays with Allen. She'll go up, and she misses, but she's fouled. Yeah, that was a great board, great board there by Allen. So I didn't get the number. Did you see who they called it on? It so, it, yeah, 32, Nevaeh McWilliams, and that's her fourth foul. Yeah, both teams in some foul trouble here. So Shelby Allen, the 64% free throw shooter, will go to the line. Like we said, her high was 14 against Orleans coming into this game. She shattered that tonight. Her first free throw, no good. With 18 points. So having herself a game. And she'll be huge if they want to beat whoever wins that second game. Yeah, they'll need her to have a huge game like she did tonight or like she has tonight. So Allen's second free throw was good. So Dansby with it up ahead. She'll pull up and shoot off the rim, no good. Rebound will be called a jump ball. Possession will switch over to Lanesville. Trying to sort things out. There was quite a bit of contact. Yeah, there really was there, but, I mean, it is a jump ball. Both teams are trying to get that possession, and it is sectional play. Emotions are going to be running high. Yeah, so substitution, Jaylee Smith will check in for Chloe Carter. Carter upset. I think she thought she got fouled there. It's the only thing I can imagine. Yeah, which, I mean, I think it was a clean play. It was a clean jump ball. 
So Crozier will bring it across. She gets it over to Allen. Inside to Allen, actually, and she'll use her left hand. No good. Gets her own rebound, goes up, and it's going to be a foul on Aaliyah Brown. Yeah. And they're going to get her before she could ever even get a shot off. So Shelby Allen will go to the line to shoot two. She can only add to her total. She leads everyone in scoring tonight. Her first free throw off the backboard, no good. Like we said, 19 points, a chance to get to 20 for the first time this year, and she will. Yeah, she's played a great game. Yeah, she's six foot um, frame underneath, and that's just a load to handle. Yeah, which the, it is a size mismatch there for the Lions. So up ahead, Byers for three, it's good. And this Rock Creek team is not gonna go away without a fight. Yeah, there's no quit in the Lions here, but they got a tall task ahead of them to make this comeback. So here's a steal for Dansby. Dansby a chance to make it a 10 point game, and she will. And we got a timeout for Lanesville. Rock Creek fans on their feet here with 3.12 to go in the ball game. Your score, Lanesville 55, Rock Creek 45. We will send it away for 30. And so we're back here. Rock Creek making a run, making it a 10-point game. We said that was the number they needed to get to earlier. And will it be a little bit too late? I, I don't think so if they can get some more momentum. No, I think with three uh, three plus minutes here, you got plenty of time to make a 10-point comeback. I mean, it's going to start here defensively, obviously. But if they can play solid defense, it'll be a great game. So Crozier will bring it across, and they're going to get 42, Chloe Carter for the foul. She kind of was right on Crozier's hip all the way up the floor. Yeah, I mean, the entire way up the court, but it's only her first of the night. Yeah, so Coach Coach Nord not too upset about that one. No, by any means. Snyder will throw it in to Kerr. Kerr moves to her right all the way into the paint. Passes deflected, stolen. Dancy with it ahead. She's the quickest on the court, using her speed all the way to the rim. No good. And we're going to get out of bounds. So, Calise Dansby had a chance to make it an eight-point game and just smoked the layup. Yeah, which she struggled around the rim tonight. That one is, that one's big for sure. As Lanesville with a chance here. If they can get it, if they can get some scores, they definitely are still in control. Jane Davis will bring it across with the steal from behind by Byers. And Rock Creek will run with it a little bit here. Byers using the screen, trying to find somewhere to go with it. Looking for her teammate. She finally gets it over to Dansby, underneath to Carter. Dumped down to Brown. Brown goes up, and it's good. And we've got ourselves an eight-point game. Yeah, I mean, that's great ball movement there by Rock Creek. Crozier brings it across. Pressure, and we're going to get a ball on the floor, and we get a whistle, and it's going to be a... Foul on number four, Hadley Crozier. Yeah, which this game's getting physical and it's getting to be a great game. Yeah, Lanesville fans are not pleased with that one, but you can't touch them when they're on the ground. Yeah, I mean, she dove pretty much right on top of her head. So, Rock Creek with the chance here. It's an eight point game, 219 to go. Can they pull off the comeback? We will see. Dansby will bring it across. One, two, two. Zone for Lanesville. She'll swing it over to Jones. Jones on the drive, gets stopped at the top of the key. She'll finally find Carter, but the timeout was called by Coach Nord, and 
with the stoppage of play here. Lanesville 55, Rock Creek 47, 202 to go. We're gonna keep it here for this one as you just, um, you know, how do you, how do you see the things unfold there? That was pretty wild. Yeah, I mean, it's been a great game. Rock Creek is battling like they haven't all year by any means, which they're right in this game. Uh, Dansby needs to hit some more layups, really. Yeah. I mean, that's what you look back at. Dansby had that layup that she missed. I mean, it could be a six-point game right now. But I feel like, you know, Lanesville fans were upset with that call. I think the game's been officiated really well. Yeah, which they really have. And, and Dansby's played a wonderful game really yeah. all night long. But I mean, Dansby's flown around. She's got herself seven points. But I don't, I don't even know how many assists or rebounds she has. It's an, it would be an impressive number. Yeah, and I mean, and uh, a stat that's not going to be statted really is the way she's handled uh, Lanesville's pressure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we saw that. 18 steals game one for this Lanesville team, and they just ate Christian Academy alive, but Rock Creek came into it with a different mindset that, you know, you're not going to be able to pressure us. We're going to stay our own, play our own game, and they've actually, I feel like at times, sped Lanesville up to a pace that they're uncomfortable with. And I think that we saw that a lot the, the last minute, really. So we return here, like we said, eight-point game, 2.02 to go. Inbound will come into Dansby's hand. She'll bring it across here, picks up her dribble early, gets it over to McWilliams inside, and the pass is going to be stolen. It was intended for Brown. Schneider with it for Lanesville. Under two minutes to go here. Rock Creek needs to put some pressure on him immediately. Yeah, which, I mean, Kerr made a great play on that pass there. I mean, it was a great pass, but Kerr just made a better play. So Crozier moving to her right, gets it over to Kerr in the corner. Kerr back up top. This time it'll go to Brumley. Kerr dribbles with her left hand, spins inside the paint, in trouble a little bit, gets it over to Allen. Allen kicks it out, and Brumley will hold it, forcing Lanesville into a foul situation or at least some heavy pressure. And they were going to get Crozier on the foul. And even though that Crozier is a phenomenal player, she's probably the one you want to foul, in all honesty. Yeah, I mean, she hasn't been shooting great great from the line tonight. I mean, she started out well, but she's missed several in a row. So Crozier, 17 points. Looking for her 18th front of the rim, no good. This is kind of similar to what happened to her against Borden way earlier in the season. She had two free throws at the end of the game, only was able to make one, and then Borden just didn't even get a shot off at the end of that game. That's a wild sequence, but anyways, her second one is up and good. And so Crozier Brings the lead back to nine. Dansby will bring it across, almost loses it. Yeah, I wish they got to get something going soon here. Yeah, and it needs to be a three, I would imagine. Yeah. So here's the drive, kicks it out. Dansby for three, no good. Rebounded underneath, stays with Rock Creek, but then it's going to be off the foot of Nevaeh McWilliams, R Lanesville ball. Which at that point, you'll just take the points instead of a turnover there. Yeah, I thought she should have just went straight up with it. They're going to foul Crozier again. So Hadley Crozier with opportunity to only do more damage at the line. Eighteen points tonight. She scored 29 points the first time that they faced off against Rock Creek. Her first free throw is up and no good. Yeah, which, I mean, this has been a phenomenal game. I think it... I think it shocked a lot of people how close this game really was. Yeah, definitely. So Crozier with a chance at her second. And this one's good. So I guess there's just something about that first free throw that just <laughs> she's not able to knock in. Yeah, because she's knocked down the second back-to-back -back now. Here's a three-point shot for Byers in the corner. No good. Rebound going to be called off of Aaliyah Brown. And it'll be Lanesville ball. The referee having to listen to it from the Rock Creek student section right now. I guess there's some uh, sweat on the ball or something. I mean, it'd have to be a ton to meet a towel, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, something there. Maybe it was a spot of blood or something, but... Anyways, 10-point lead for Lanesville. They will inbound it. Schneider 
And we're going to get a foul called on Chloe Carter. The referee will explain it to Coach Nord. We can see a reaction. She kind of just smiled and shook her head. She'll make a substitution. Yeah, meanwhile, Coach Hilton. Hinton. Hinton was ripping Crozier a new one, really. I mean, Crozier didn't really even do anything other than just clap. So Brumley will go to the line to shoot two. It was a technical foul. Her first one is up and good. And you hate to see it kind of, you hate to see the wheels kind of fall off at the end because it was, Rock Creek's comeback bid was pretty impressive to watch. Yeah, I mean, it's been a great game overall. Second free throw was good as well for Brumley. Yeah, the end score is not going to tell how close this game really was. Yeah, I mean, Rock Creek had every chance there. Added it an eight-point game. Really, it was six at one. It could have been six if they would have just made the layup. And then, you know, things kind of just got out of hand a little bit. So Rock Creek making their substitutions here. They're down by 12 with 40 seconds to go. The inbound will come straight to Brumley. So Hilton Brumley will have a chance, I would assume, to dribble it out unless Rock Creek decides to foul. Yeah, which it doesn't look like they are. They're just going to give a little pressure. Yeah, so Rock Creek, Jaylee Smith, number 54, one of the seniors on this team, as well as Chloe Carter, number 42, who had to take a seat with the... Uh, situation. So up ahead, 10 seconds on the clock. Brumley will dribble, and she just backs it out. And that'll do it for the first game of sectional 61 semifinal action. Lanesville wins it 59-47. We'll take a moment to gather our thoughts and then give you our postgame show. And so, like we said, first game was kind of a close one in, in terms of uh, Rock Creek's ability to try and come back there at the end. Lanesville ended up winning it by 12. But it was a heck of a game to watch. When you look at halftime, um, Lanesville had the 32-20 to 20 lead. And then, you know, third quarter they had a 14-point lead. But Rock Creek was able to fight their way back into the game, just wasn't able to get a big-time shot. Yeah, I mean, we said it several times. If Rock Creek could get it within 10, they had a chance, and that's exactly what they did real late in the game, and they did. They had a chance, and ultimately, Lanesville comes out with the win. Yeah, so the unofficial stats for tonight for Rock Creek, Byers with 17, Brown with four, Danzy with seven, Newton added two, McWilliams with a three, Jones with two, and then finally, Smith had 10 tonight to... Uh, finish it up for Rock Creek. You think you got Lanesville's? Yeah, and then for Lanesville, Crozier, 19, Kerr, 12, Emma Davis with two, uh, Brumley with four, Allen with 20, and Schneider with two. Yeah, so we always give our player the game, so we'll go ahead and start off with uh, Lanesville, who actually who won. They'll move on to the final tomorrow. Who's your player of the game? I mean, my player of the game's got to be Hadley Crozier. So, yeah, I mean, I, I was going to say – I was going to say Shelby Allen, just because of her 20 points. She was just such a presence in the post. But, you know, Crozier's not a bad pick either. She did a lot of things, and her defense was phenomenal to watch. Yeah, that's why I gave it to her ultimately, her steals. And, I mean, she rebounded the ball well, which Allen did that too as well. So, I mean, I think it could go either way, really. So, for Rock Creek, you want to go ahead and give yours? 
Yeah, mine's gonna be Breyer. I mean, she shot the ball like nobody else. Yeah, Byers had 17. I'm gonna actually go ahead and we're gonna disagree. We never disagree on this, but I'm gonna <laughs> give mine to uh, Khalees Dansby. Just even though she only had seven points, she was just such a presence on the defensive and offensive glass. And then her ability to pass was phenomenal. Her leadership, she really kept this team in it. I mean, yeah, and she was a steady rock for the uh, for Rock Creek. I mean, she handled the pressure all night long. And I mean, pressure from Lanesville is a tall task to handle. And I think she did it phenomenally well. Yeah, so that's gonna do it for us tonight. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. We'll be on the call again for the sectional 61 final between the Lanesville Lady Eagles and then the winner of this one, the Lady Senators or the Lady Braves. We'll see what happens. Thank you all for listening. Once again, I'm Nick Ingram and my partner tonight was Adam Mole. and thank you all.